If you see this plant, do not touch it. What would we do without plant plants? They produce the oxygen we breathe. They're a healthy source of food for us to eat. And they're just downright beautiful to look at. But not all plants grow to make this world a better place. Some of them can kill. So, if you ever see any of the plants from this video, whether it's during a road trip or a hike or even in somebody's garden, make sure to stay as far away from them as possible. Your curiosity could cost you your health. Or, in the worst-case scenario, your life. Ooh, that's serious. Before you find out what murderous plants you should steer clear of, be sure to click that subscribe button. We have tons of helpful and informative videos like this one coming out daily on the Bright Side of Life. So don't forget to ring the bell to enable post notifications. That way, you won't miss a thing. Even killer plants. Alright, here are the likely suspects. Number 1. Diefenbachia, also known as dumb cane or leopard lily. Uh-huh. Diefenbachia is a tropical plant native to South and Central America. But if you think it's just some extremely rare exotic plant that's hard to stumble across, you'd be wrong. And that's because the dumb cane is a common houseplant. Lots of people get this plant because it's really easy to take care of. It's low maintenance, yet rewards you for the little work you put into it with large, beautiful leaves. It's no secret that dumb cane is a toxic plant, and it's got a bad rep for that reason. But you shouldn't be so quick to believe all the crazy stories online of this thing killing anyone that crosses it. In most cases, Diefenbachia isn't deadly for people. However, that doesn't mean you shouldn't be cautious around it. In all parts of the plant, there are tiny needle-shaped crystals of calcium oxalate called raphides. Their main purpose is to protect the plant from herbivores. You know, plant eaters. But that's not all. According to biologists, dumb cane contains other defensive toxins besides calcium oxalate. So, what danger can this plant possibly pose to people? Did we get enough peas in that last sentence? Hmm. Let's imagine you decide to chew on one of its leaves. In this case, you'll experience profuse salivation and a strong burning sensation in your mouth. Next, your lips, tongue, and throat will swell up. This swelling can result in difficulties breathing, swallowing, and talking. When ingested, Diefenbachia leaves have been known to cause vomiting, excuse me, as well as nausea, diarrhea, oh, a hoarse voice, and tongue blistering. Oh, that was bad. Well, you should also avoid touching the leaves. You may get some of its juice on your hands, and this can cause a skin irritation. And if you forget that you've just touched a toxic plant and you rub your eyes, oy, be prepared for pain and burning in your eyes. But what's even worse, the toxins can damage your cornea, the outer layer of the eye. Whew. The effects of Diefenbachia poisoning are unpleasant, but thankfully, they're usually not too serious. You may suffer from intense pain and discomfort in your mouth for a few days, but after that, it'll go away on its own. Unfortunately, dumb cane poisoning has resulted in some deaths, but such cases have been extremely rare. Still, it's crucial to know what to do if somebody, like a child, tasted a leaf or two of this pretty plant. First of all, wash out their mouth with a cold, damp cloth and give their hands a thorough scrub. If they've gotten the plant's juice in their eyes, rinse them out too. In case of ingestion, they also need to drink some milk. But if they can't swallow, don't give them anything orally. Keep a close eye on their condition, and if it gets worse, call emergency services immediately. Number 2. Castor Bean Plant People use the castor bean plant for tons of medicinal purposes. For example, castor oil has been used for centuries as a natural remedy for hmm, constipation, thanks to its laxative properties. Castor seeds, or beans, without their hull, have been used to treat syphilis, leprosy, and constipation as well. It's even known to have been used as a form of birth control. At the same time, the castor bean plant is much more dangerous than Diefenbachia. 
Well, not the plant itself, but the hull of its beans. It contains a deadly poison called ricin. This substance is one of the most toxic things known to humankind. That's why seeds of the castor bean plant are extremely dangerous to insects, animals, and people. If a person swallows even one bean in its outer coating, they're already in danger. Symptoms of ricin poisoning include nausea, diarrhea, vomiting, and abdominal pain. These signs appear within a couple of hours after ingesting the seed. Vomiting and often bloody diarrhea don't stop for several days, leading to a drop in urine production and blood pressure. Because of all that, an affected person is at risk for dehydration, shock, liver and kidney failure, pancreatic damage, and ultimately death. Castor plant seeds are especially dangerous for children. This is not stuff to play around with, Captain Obvious. If a victim doesn't die within 3 to 5 days, they'll most likely recover. Plus, if an intact seed is swallowed and not chewed, chances are it'll just pass through your digestive tract without causing any harm. But if the hull of the seed is broken, the ricin can escape and poison the body. By the way, even seemingly harmless and really useful castor oil can become toxic if you keep it in your mouth for too long or if you consume it in large amounts. Number 3. White Snake Root While snake root grows mainly in the US and Canada, it's quite a tall plant, reaching about 3 to 5 feet in height. The plant itself looks very pretty and innocent. In the summer and fall, it's covered with little white flowers that grow in beautiful clusters. It really is lovely and highly poisonous both for people and animals. White snake root contains trematol, a toxic alcohol. Cattle that graze in places where this plant is in abundance are at risk of suffering from weakness, constipation, muscular tremors, and eventually death. But what's even worse, the trematol toxin can cause poisoning in people through both direct consumption and indirect contamination. For example, if you drink the milk or eat the meat of a poisoned cow, you can get milk sickness. This medical condition is characterized by weakness, loss of appetite, nausea, abdominal discomfort, vomiting, and constipation. If the poisoning gets too severe, a person may have convulsions and fall into a coma that eventually leads to death. In fact, milk sickness was the cause of thousands of fatalities among American Midwest settlers in the early 19th century. Number 4. Tobacco Plant most people nowadays are well aware of the dangers of products made with tobacco, like cigarettes or snuff. But not many know that the plant itself also harms the farmers who cultivate it. The green leaves of the tobacco plant contain nicotine, which can act as a poison. And it's not like you have to burn the plant for it to poison you. It can get absorbed through the skin, especially in wet conditions, like when it rains or a worker is covered in sweat. As a result, severe nicotine poisoning, also known as green tobacco sickness, can develop. Symptoms of nicotine poisoning include dizziness, nausea, headaches, weakness, and vomiting. In most cases, workers on tobacco plantations don't have any protection, and the conditions they work in are perfect for the development of green tobacco sickness. In fact, the average plantation worker comes in contact with the same amount of nicotine you'd find in 50 cigarettes. After harvesting season is over, the blood of one worker contains as much nicotine as that of a chain smoker. It weakens their immune system immensely, paving the way for all kinds of diseases like cancer. So why are we still harvesting this plant anyways? Beats me. As a bonus, I'd like to introduce you to Audrey 2, the meat-eating plant from Little Shop of Horrors. But I can't, because she's not real. And besides, the other plants featured would be jealous. So, have you ever seen any of the poisonous plants described in this video? Perhaps you know of some others. Let us know down in the comments. If this video will help you be more careful in the future, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. 
Stay healthy and safe on the Bright Side of Life.